Hello. Beep, 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 beep. Welcome to the Court of the EDI Jester. I hope you are well. Uh, here is another in the series of uh, help for parents. This is uh, taking a look at Safe Schools Alliance UK. <clears throat> now, this is a, I've already done Bayswater and our duty. So if you're a parent and you're here for a first time, for the first time, and you're seeing one of my videos for the first time, these are designed to give you an idea of what support is out there for you. And it's an ongoing series that I intend to keep doing as things develop. We, I am absolutely of the opinion that the fight needs to be taken to schools. We have serious problems there. And Safe Schools Alliance, I would see as people who are very much involved and very effective in that arena. So if you're looking for something specifically taking on schools and with a very specific lens, Safe Schools Alliance UK puts safeguarding first. I've said it thousands of times on my videos. For those of you that <coughs> have seen it already, that the only way to deal with this is as a safeguarding issue. There is, there is no other way. It's a safeguarding issue right across the board. Uh, as soon as somebody says, I'm trans or I'm non-binary, that should be the first thing you think, that it's safeguarding. But before we begin, please do become a warrior teacher. Come and join the team. Um, we're, we're working together. We're fighting back. We're learning. Well, we laugh a lot. Come and join us. If not, please do buy me a coffee or a super thanks on YouTube um, or subscribe to my Substack. Any way that you can help out would be really welcomed. Thank you. So you can see here, so Safe Schools Alliance, we've got putting safeguarding first. That's their, that's their key message there, putting safeguarding first. But they also then have information such as how to talk to school schools about their resources. What are the schools using for their PSHE or RSE resources? And they have fact sheets and also letter templates that can be very helpful, helpful for those of you that are just beginning the process of trying to get the schools to engage. They then have various posts about different subjects. Our position as a safeguarding organization is an interesting one there in the middle. Um, and how they've been dismantling barriers. Here they've uh, highlighted the 2023 paper about dismantling a key barrier to gender diversity, diversifying the early years workforce is a really interesting one if you want to have a look at that. Um, and then who we are. Safe Schools Alliance UK is a grassroots organisation which campaigns to uphold child safeguarding in schools. SSA UK is led by a group of volunteers with diverse backgrounds, including teaching, nursing and child safeguarding. We have no religious or political affiliation. Amen to that, some would say. We represent parents, grandparents, teachers, governors and health professionals from more than from more than 30 local educational authority areas in the UK. Many of our supporters are lesbian, gay or bisexual. Many are parents, carers or grandparents of LGB or trans identifying young people. Notice there the split between the two. That's very important when it comes to the language used by these people is to keep the LGB away from it. This motivates us to ensure that schools keep every child safe and are inclusive of all. So the concerns here are concerns. This is Safe Schools Alliance. The adoption of gender identity ideology in schools and its impact on the lives of children, especially girls. The use by schools of RSE materials which sexualize children and promote porn and other harmful sexual practices. Um, and SA, SSA UK works with schools and educators to ensure that school policies meet the safeguarding needs of all students and that they do this while taking into account the protected characteristics of the Equality Act 2010. The physical, mental and emotional well-being of children is more important to us than anything else. To achieve this, we believe a collaborative approach with schools is essential. This is because it has the best chance of ensuring a safe and supportive environment for children. Again, along along the lines of, uh, of, of what we talk about and what I talk about, that need to ensure that safeguarding is at the fore um, and to ensure that children are kept safe by those from those that would harm them. So it's an interesting resource that they have, for example, here on how to talk to schools about their resources, because schools will have a number of resources around gender and sex and PSHE. And some of it may come from activist external groups such as Stonewall, Mermaids, the Proud Trust and various other bunches and gaggles of lunatics who have managed to infiltrate themselves into the school system. So many schools will engage openly and constructively with parents to discuss PSHE resources and policies. This approach is supported and encouraged by the Department for Education and is likely to result in the most positive outcome for children. The DFA guidance on parental engagement on relationships education says engagement is a positive step. It helps to ensure that everyone involved understands what is being taught, when and how. It helps develop a shared set of values between parents and schools on these particular subjects, some of which are quite controversial. 
However, and here's the big however, some schools are less willing to genuinely listen to parents. Many schools are also advised by charities and lobby groups, as I mentioned earlier, that require full belief in gender ideology. These groups often misrepresent the law and recommend action that would undermine the safeguarding policies. This resource is intended to support parents in talking to schools and countering some of the common misunderstandings. Ultimately, if a school is unable to work cooperatively with parents and to answer questions adequately, parents should follow the process for making a formal complaint to a school. And there's a link there which will take you to advice and guidance on how precisely you can do that. So some examples here of the type of things that they're dealing with as we scroll down further that you can then uh, click on to find answers to. Here's a good one here. The school says we can't show parents the resources due to copyright. We're hearing this one more and more. The DfE guidance on parent engagement and relationship education says ideally wh whichever method is used, schools would show parents the resources they will use and set out sequence sequences of teaching. Schools could meet this guideline in a number of ways, whether that is by arranging a group or individual meeting to show resources, making resources available online or by email to parents or showing resources over Zooms or Teams, etc. And then advice there to ask the school how they are fulfilling their responsibilities. I've been teaching in the adult sector and I don't teach children, but in the adult sector and I've produced tons of resources. I've got tons of resources for the Warrior Teacher Program and I've written them all. I'd have no issue with anybody seeing them, you know. Not if it was if it was a schools, but parents want to see it. Come in, I'll tell you all about it. I don't understand why some of these companies won't do that. Well, actually, I do understand why some of these companies won't do that. And so do you. In, in addition, it says here, the guidance is clear that schools should introduce new items to the curriculum in, consul in consultation with parents. The broad process for engagement should involve the school, providing clear information to all parents in an accessible way on their proposed program and policy, parents being given reasonable time to consider this information, the school providing reasonable opportunities for parents to feed in their views, and the school giving considerable consideration sorry, to those views from parents. Right, get the idea? Number of other similar questions that come up then about the Department for Education, CAMH, PSAG, and then talking about transgender inclusion policies there. There's an interesting one there. We have a student Look at the Q plus group to support children in school. Um, I think that is a, an almost 100% red flag. That's a big red flag. And I know that other people think the same thing too. But as a parent, if you are seeing this for the first time, here's another one for you. Without our duty, Bayswater, we've now got Safe Schools Alliance with a particular focus on schools and a particular focus on safeguarding. So you can get support from the other two and other resources as well, usable resources. And again, you've got this to pull on. It's wonderful what's come out of this movement. And these these organizations are just an example of some of the positive things that have happened to us over the last goodness knows how many years. It seems a very long time indeed now. But I'll leave you to go and explore more. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got a parent that you know that's confused, you can use the series I have on my YouTube, which is just simply called Help for Parents. Search for that. And it details some of the various groups that parents can get support from. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later. You have a great day. Bye-bye.